So I've been thinking about this here lately, and um, I've been in some sort of counseling or therapy pretty regularly for the past, I'd say, two to three years. And before that, my only experience with therapy was like short, uh, short sessions, you know, when I was a kid uh, pertaining to like attention deficit disorder things like that. I never really dove into talk therapy and some other forms of therapy that can come along with, you know, counseling sessions, uh, working with a counselor or a therapist. And, um, what I've been thinking about is that it actually takes, you know, there's kind of a stigma to counseling and I used to feel this, okay, because this was my apprehension to counseling it was the stigma attached to it like people that go to counseling oh they're, they're weak they need help right you need help if you need someone else to help you with your problems you know you're not very strong-minded um, you don't have a strong enough will um, but what I've realized in doing it you know actually that's the thing, man. You can't judge stuff before you do it. But what I found through the last couple years of counseling, and I've gone, I try to go every two weeks, but there's been spans where I didn't go, like when coronavirus first broke out, I didn't go for a couple months. But before that, I was going pretty regularly, and I've been through a couple of different counselors, and I've realized that it takes a very strong person to engage in therapy. It takes a strong person to delve into the depths of themselves and try to improve where they need improvement. To take a look at yourself and objectively kind of say, hey, I am not up to par. This is not where I want to be in this area mentally, you know, I want to be better at this, better at communicating, better at dealing with my feelings. Maybe you don't even know what your feelings are, right? Therapy will help you figure that out. You know, where, where the, where your feelings come from, what your actual feelings are. A lot of times anger, you know, a lot of times like hurt and embarrassment or shame will manifest as anger, jealousy, rage, right? And it might come out completely differently than, than what the source is, right? You might be, something might be hurting you, right? That's going on in one area of your life, but it manifests as, as anger towards another person for another instance, another thing that happened. And so you think it's the thing that happened that, that set you off, but really, at the source of it, there's some other feelings going on there from another incident. And until you really sit down and delve into that, dig into the deep parts of your mind, the recesses of your mind, and figure out what the problems are, you're not going to be able to improve upon how they manifest, right? So, I think it's important that we get rid of the stigma of needing help, of seeking help, right? It's silly to think that you're born into this life, right? With all the skills you need to, to, to figure things out, to cope with life, Life is harsh, man. It's harsh as shit. And your parents have a completely different experience than you have. So even thinking that they could equip you, you know, raising you to deal with everything that you might encounter in your personal life or internally, what feelings you might encounter, what obstacles you might encounter externally. That's just silly. It's silly to think that you could do it all on your own. 
that, you know, it's like you're not born with any of the speed to deal with emotional trauma, emotional stress, um, interpersonal relationships. These aren't things that you're born with. These are all things you have to learn. So it seems really silly to think that, and I'm guilty of it. I, I for years, I thought that needing someone else's help to figure things out was a weakness. And it's like, really, it's a strength. I mean, it is, for one, to be able to set your ego aside. A lot of people associate ego with strength, right? Ego with power and, and uh, you know, self-reliance, you know, it's all, but that's all ego. And, and to set ego aside is one of the hardest things to do. The, one of the hardest things to do is say, I don't have all the tools. <laughs> I don't have all the tools for this. I need a coach, you know, or I need someone objective that I can share what's going on with me and they can give me helpful tools to use to deal with these things. That takes a much stronger person than, than for someone who it, it's, it takes a much stronger person to actually deal with these things than to ignore them, to bury them, to act like they don't exist, to, you know, just let it manifest however it manifests and, and, uh, come what may. It takes a much stronger person to actually dig into the feelings, dig into your past, dig into your present and figure out where you're, you know, how you got to where you're at and how to get to where you want to be. Because most people, if they're honest with themselves, and that's another thing, like you have to be a strong person to be honest with yourself. It's incredibly difficult. People lie to themselves all the time, that's the ego. But you have to be a strong person to, to, to sit down and say, look, I'm not where I wanna be. And I think most people will admit, if they're completely honest, that they're not, you know, they, they could be in a better place mentally, physically, spiritually, they could be in a better place and they would like to be in a better place. But at the same time, most people don't have the tools. And so we seek out help from others. We seek out those tools from other people who have experience with them. So I implore you, if, if you think you're a strong person but you know you've got some mental defects, if you will, some some mental weaknesses, some places you can improve upon, things that you could, ways that you could be a better person all around, whether it's how you treat people or how you feel about yourself or um, prejudices or um, perceived injustices. You feel like, you know, you're being uh, abused or bullied or you feel like you're an abuser or, or a bullier. It's like, you have to be strong, strong in mind to go and deal with that stuff, to dig in, to see what, what's the meat of all this. And I would invite you, in fact, I implore you, as I said, to, to do it, do it. The best way to do it is to seek out some help because you don't have all the tools, man. It's not, there's nothing embarrassing about not being born with the tools because no one is born with the tools. No one is. And if we don't figure out what tools we need and how to use them, we're never gonna improve. That's a fact. There are people that go through their entire lives and they're unhappy with who they are, what they've done, how they handle situations, but at the same time, they they never had the balls to go seek out those tools and to dig into themselves, figure out where they can improve. Go do it, man. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of finding out who you are and getting to where you want to be, becoming the person you want to be. Therapy, counseling, help. 
These are things, these are not things for the weak. These are tools for the strong.